It's update day and we've got some brand new devices. It's rare that we get new devices in creative mode and today we actually got three. Now I should say it's not cars or helicopters or boats, but I think these new devices are gonna be very helpful for a lot of map makers out there and open up a lot of possibilities for things that we couldn't do before. Now we didn't get any prefabs or galleries in this update, but there were some leaks of some prefabs and galleries that are going to come that look absolutely amazing. So today we're gonna look at everything and talk about the applications of these things that are really gonna help, I think, for the future. So first, let's look at the leaks that came out. It's been leaked that they have these new castle prefabs that look absolutely amazing. These castles are actually from Save the World, which actually gets me even more excited because if they're gonna continue to import stuff from Save the World, there's just a lot of things that are gonna open up with this. This is actually gonna be really great for my Skyrim build that I'm working on, so I can't wait for these. Okay, guys, now let's dive into some of the new stuff today. We're gonna get into the three new devices in just a second, but before we do do, I'm gonna show you that the prefabs and galleries that recently came out that were bugged are now fixed. So if you use the lazy links prefabs or galleries, they should all work uh, just perfect now. Also, we have a new gun in creative. We got all of the variations of the lever action shotgun. So now we can have some good wild west fights with the shotgun and we've also got the lever action rifle, which is great. So I'm glad that they're starting to add the battle royale weapons more regularly now because last year we we're not getting that at all. One other really cool new thing is there's a new setting where if you scroll down to the pickaxe area, you can change the setting right here that says start with pickaxe to no. And then when you start the game, you'll see here that there's a pickaxe free character. You can't swing or do anything. It's just his free hands, which now this is actually a really great thing for death runs because sometimes that pickaxe is just in the way. Like I was saying, great for death runs, great for adventure maps, that kind of thing. Now be warned though, if you're using this setting, you can't kill the pickaxe back. So even if I pick up a gun, it doesn't like change my number one setting to a pickaxe. Like I can use my gun, but when I switch back to like the pickaxe slot, there's no pickaxe. So just be aware that I don't think there's a way to turn off this setting in the middle of the game so that someone can have a pickaxe now. Okay, now let's get to the devices. Let's start with the brand new end game device. So if you go to your devices and you can see it's right here at the top. If you can't find it, just type in end game. This device is actually really interesting. So there are already a lot of settings where you can have different things to end the game, but those can get kind of complicated. This device makes it really, really easy to have an end game win condition. You can choose right here what to end if you want it to end a round or actually end the whole game. You can even choose which team can activate this device. So if it's the winning team, it's just whoever activates it first, or you can even choose which team is able to activate this device. So maybe team one has a different win condition than team two two versus team three, etc. And then you can customize the victory call out so you can say, good job, buddy. So condescending, I hate when people call me buddy. My wife calls me buddy sometimes just to bug me. And you can have a custom defeat call out. You can say, bad job, buddy. <laughs> And then you have these other settings. You can enable it on the game start, activating team, activating class can activate it. And then right here are the channels that can activate it. So if it's attached to a trigger, maybe it's activated once the tracker device has all of its conditions met. It can be connected to anything that can transmit on a channel. Now, one thing to note about this is you can see here that it takes a thousand memory to place the first one of these versus just changing your game settings takes zero memory. So if you're running low on memory and you can get away with your win conditions through your settings, I would say do that first. But if you have a low memory map and you don't care about it and you don't want to learn all of those settings, this is a nice, easy way to have an end win condition on your map, which I actually think is really important in creative mode. While I think the more advanced map makers out there aren't gonna really use this device as much, just because they're always fighting for that last little bit of memory. But I think some of the newer map makers out there will look at this device and say, thank you, I can do what I want now without having to learn all of the settings and the tricks there. So anything that makes it easier for newer players or even the advanced players just having an easy device to throw down is a great, great addition. Okay, this is a new player checkpoint pad and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But first, let's talk about the TARDIS or the phone booth. So this is a really cool device we've seen in Party Royale, but now we finally have it in creative mode, but uh, there's not much to it. There are literally zero settings to this. You can't customize this at all. You can't resize it. When I try to change the width or the height or the depth, like nothing happens to it. So now you can change the like, uh, like orientation 
duration of it, so that's nice. But the way this works is when you start your game, you can then interact with the phone booth, and then you can go in and you can change to any of the skins that you own. So let's uh, let's change to Wolverine. Okay, then we're gonna hit back, and then it is kind of weird when you get out. It's like really glitchy. I'm like frozen right here, and then you can get out of it. But uh, this is really great for things like role-playing maps or anything, even just a big like multiplayer map. It might be nice to be able to change your skin. Like for me, it's nice because everyone knows I'm the banana, so I could jump in the phone booth and change to a different skin so that people wouldn't know who I am. But I should mention that the player reference device does not change when you change skins. So I changed my skin to a stormtrooper here and I've got a player reference device set up and I triggered it initially as Peely and then I switched to the stormtrooper and it's not changing when I re-trigger it. But if I change first, then it uh, triggers the new skin that you have. Now I should note, look at the memory once again, it is 1,294 to place one of these. So just be aware of that if you're strapped for memory. Now because it's update day guys, and because I'm gonna need a thumbnail, let's play with this uh, phone booth for just a second. You guys know what that means. But this time I'm gonna make it extra fancy. We're gonna make it go around in a circle first like this. And then you guys know what's gonna happen here. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Hold on guys, we gotta make my ode to the phone booth uh, complete. There we go. There's the thumbnail, guys. <laughs> All right, enough of that silliness. Let's move on to the new player checkpoint pad. But this one is actually really cool. There's some interesting things that you can do with this checkpoint pad that you can't do with the other one. So with the old checkpoint pad, you had to have it placed like right on the ground. You couldn't do it on the walls. Like there was no other way to use it other than it having to be on grid. So you had to really plan out your maps well in advance so that you always had places where checkpoints could be. With this checkpoint, now you can place it wherever you want. You can orient it however you want. You can and even change the size of it however you want. So it gets pretty big. And the hitboxes on these actually grow with it. So you can see here, I'm just gonna touch it barely. You can see the hitbox changed with the size of it. And uh, so then you can even use the checkpoints as you jump up. It can, you can use it as a pad. Or if you come up to the pad settings and turn off the visibility in the game, then it makes it so there is no hitbox on it. You can just pass straight through it, but it still acts as a checkpoint. So you can see now that giant checkpoint is gone, but it still acts as a checkpoint, but there's no hitbox on it. It just is, I'm walking like straight on the ground. Now let's talk about some of the usage points of this. So one cool thing is let's say you have a big tunnel you're gonna fall down or a dropper or something you want a checkpoint in it now I don't think this works exactly like I would want it to with the dropper so let me just show you what happens when it's on the wall so the checkpoint is about halfway down this little shaft when I jump down oh you can see I just hit it and now I died but now watch what happens when I respawn so whoa whoa see it deploys my glider even though I have glider redeploy off. So if you have a checkpoint that's high and it's in the middle of the air with no ground on it, the person's glider will redeploy. But it is cool that you can have your checkpoint up in the air. See, I run under this and it doesn't activate it. But when I jump, it all of a sudden activates. And then if I respawn, you can see that we fall a little bit down to just below where the checkpoint was. So now I'm sure there's some really cool ways people can use where they're positioning their trigger in ways that we've never seen before. Now let me show you one other cool application. Let's say we're walking down a really narrow hallway made by props. But we're walking down and there is no way out of this. I'm trapped, I can't get out. What do I do? Maybe if I respawn, something will happen. Now look, we respawn outside of the wall because I placed the checkpoint out here. So you'll see here, I have the checkpoint just poking in and I've blown it way up so that uh, I can trigger it when I just barely touch it right here. But you always spawn in the center of this thing. So now when the player hits respawn, they spawn outside of the wall. Or maybe you place it up high and upside down to where they had to jump in order to activate it or something like that. So I think there's just a lot of ways you can use this that you couldn't use with the other checkpoint device. But once again, this device costs 1,735 memory when you use it for the first time, which is colossal. So only use this if you absolutely need it and just be aware that it costs a lot of memory. So there you have it guys, really cool new devices I'm excited about and I really can't wait for that castle prefab and galleries to come out. So hopefully that's next week or sometime really soon.